The first big idea is uh, you don't have to pitch everyone. One of the challenges in business is uh, we do like to say, gosh, you know, business can come from anywhere. And you just never know who you're going to bump into, right? You hear these stories all the time. I was just standing in line to buy a hot dog at, uh, you know, at the, at the Green Bay Packer game. And I bumped into so-and-so and it led to this and this. Um, those, are, those are great stories because they're great stories. Uh, but if we're trying to develop our business on purpose, the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we're talking to, that we're focusing our effort on the right people. Every, you're always going to need somebody who can actually select and pay for your services, right? So that's our economic buyer in, uh, in, in a broad sense. Um, you need, once you've met people who can pay for and use your services, you need to make sure that your values align, right? That you have, uh, that you have matching um, outcomes that you're after and beliefs that you work within. Uh, there's nothing worse than trying to work with somebody who you have a fundamental disagreement with. So uh, I always say, you know, there's a value match that we're, that we're trying to establish right away. Um, and then... And then and only then does it matter what the problem or opportunity is, and then you you being able to apply your your services uh, to that. So with that in mind, uh, the reason this is important is because the the more time you spend talking to people who are not who do not are not economic buyers and do not match your values, the less time you have for actual business development. Right? There's just um, if you had to choose, right? You could work through and, and, and talk with a bunch of influencers and other people who are really important, or you could go to, uh, you know, you could meet with one economic buyer a week and your business would change dramatically. So let's uh, get in front of it. So the question people ask is, well, Greg, how do you do it? And to that, I'm, I'm going to refer to this, uh, this grid I have on the side. So on the x-axis, we have product complexity from uh, simple, boy, it's, it's going to throw me off. It's from simple to complex. Uh, the plus side is complex. You work in the complex side. Simple to me is something like uh, a pen, right? Uh, you don't need a lot of uh, advice to buy a pen. However, if it's the first time that you've ever invested in something like cloud storage and you know nothing about cloud storage, to you, that's a, that's a complex product. And that's probably the key to the x-axis is it's really, it doesn't lie within you. To What you do may sound maybe very simple to you and it may be, uh, you know, uh, it's, you know it like the back of your hand. If, you're, if your customer does not, then it's a complex product. Budget control is everything from on the bottom. Budget control is, I have a set budget. So when I used to run a little division uh, of a company, uh, I had a $5,000 budget. So no, nobody had to, I, I didn't get questioned on this $5,000 that I would spend towards uh, staff development, for instance. So I got to choose to put that in control. So that's, I have a very set budget on the bottom. Up at the very top though, is budget prioritization, right? So when I ran my own company, um, I got to decide where all that money went. And if I had set aside $5,000 for staff development, but then I had a new opportunity that came along in, who knows what it was, to buy advertising, I could reallocate that money. So at the very top, the budget control is, I have complete budget control, I can prioritize. On the very bottom, it's, it's set for me. So the world you work in, and if, if you don't, the rest of this is gonna be pretty boring, but the world you work in is really um, uh, complex products. So out there on the, uh, on the tip of product complexity, because everything you do is customized and it really depends, right? Well, Greg, how do you solve this? Well, it depends. If that's your answer, then it's, it's, it's complex. Um, and the people that you want to deal with are the people who can prioritize hiring you and prioritize your budget. So what, I'm, what they all have in common is that in that world, right, each of these boxes um, has its own way of, of dealing with it. Like down here, it's... If you have a simple product and low budget control, then what you're looking for is just make it easy for them, right? Um, on the opposite, if, if you have low budget control but it's a complex product, then it's train me how to use it. Um, what our target market is looking for from you is enlighten me, show me, uh, teach me, let me know something that I haven't known before about how it is that your product works and, and why it's important to me, right? Because that's my job at that level. My job is 
to oversee the direction of my division, to oversee the direction of uh, my entire company. And so I need to have these big ideas. I don't need specifically, I don't need to know how you do it, but I do need to know what it is that you do and why it is that it would be important to me. So that's the first thing is you don't have to pitch everyone. Um, my story, a story that may help bring this together. So uh, I used to sell computer training. In computer training, one of the things we sold was Excel classes. So you had Excel level one, two, and three. It's, it's a pretty simple product. All I needed to do is I just needed to make sure that it fit into people's budget. So our number one selling product was called the club. And so you could train somebody on all of the Microsoft Office products. I think at the time it was like $997. But we had found that most people had uh, staff development budgets of $1,000. So for each class sold for $225, but you could buy the, you know, access to all the classes for $1,000. And it was an easy staff development expense. They could just take it on. So that to me is a that simple product. And then that's how we just needed to make it easy for them to purchase. Um, on the other end over here, I was helping somebody with tax credits. So complex instruments. The first question is like, uh, who buys tax credits if you don't need, if you don't know what a tax credit is? Well, so guess what? There's a lot of companies that, if, especially if they're working on, uh, if anybody gets compensated in the company on EBITDA, they would be interested in this tax credit world. So that's the first thing, right? We, we're talking about like finding an economic buyer and then moving up to shared values, right? One of the shared values is that they need to be compensated in a way that they actually care about earnings per share. And then these tax credits become much more attractive. So I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the world we're working in. So you don't have to pitch everybody. What you need to do is you need to make sure that you're working in a world where people are going to be interested in uh, enlightenment on that. So that's the first big idea I have for